sometimes we like to feel like I don't have enough. And I literally said that a little while ago, like, I'm just, I'm not qualified for this. And we discount what God can do. Yes. And we have to stay away from that because God didn't ask us to do it in our own strength or our own might. Sometimes all you have is the one scripture, the one passage you know, but that's all they need. And when it's time for them to get number two, you'll get scripture yeah, number yeah. two and you'll have it. And so sometimes we want to outrun God and be fully ready. We like to have a degree. I want to have all the classes. But sometimes we just got to take trust. the little that we have and trust it. Trust. Walk it out. Okay, guys. So we are officially back with yet another Moms of Ministry moment. And as I promised, I was bringing you as many dynamic, amazing women of God who have impacted, imparted, and have helped me become what God is using right now. I am so excited to introduce you to Apostle Elaine Johnson, who was my pastor for a good minute in time. You guys have heard me talk about how hard-headed I was and how I got beat in church. This woman right here was responsible for the disciplined version of me that you guys have. I am so eternally grateful for everything that you did, all the headache and heartache you had to put up with because of me, and for being in this moment. Um, there have been a couple of times where we talked about making sure you leave churches right. I didn't, and I had to come back, and I had to apologize. And we've done it on phone and in text, but I truly apologize for the foolishness that I brought in here, and I thank you for doing the work. This, like I said, is Apostle Johnson. She is the pastor and founder of Jesus Way Fellowship Center and has been here for 35 years. So if you are in this area, Petersburg, Virginia, anywhere close by, come on by. And you might catch me here every once in a while because when I'm in town, I do visit. But I am going to allow her to introduce herself in her own way. And so if you would introduce yourself to our five loaves, I'm going to say congregation. Ooh, you want to introduce <laughs> yourself to our five loaves audience. <laughs> I am Elaine Johnson, Apostle Elaine Johnson. I've been here at Jesus Way Fellowship Center, as was said, 35 years, founder here in the city of Petersburg, Virginia, which is not a real big city, but it, um, it has great potential, and we, we bless God for that. And so I came to this area from Hampton, Virginia. I came at, actually as um, an employee for our South Central Private Industry Council came to do the transition for Brown and Wimson. And I thought I would be here only three years. And three years led, led into me getting saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and being called as a pastor. Oh. So we do a lot of great things here. Yes. And we're grateful for being here in the city. Awesome, awesome. So I am going to start this off like I have started everything off. And I want to know... Like, as you just mentioned, your plan was not to come here to meet God and get busy and do work. So how did you find Jesus and end up saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, actually, I started running. I, I actually ran here. Um, I uh, said to God one day, because he kept calling me, and I would say, not now. Mm. So I had so much influence in Hampton, having a great time being in the world, just oh, yeah. living life. And, um, and I told God one time uh, when he cornered me about coming to him, I said, I can't serve you because I have too much influence that is around me. And I'm having a great time, and I really can't serve you here in this city. Well, two weeks later, God sent me to Petersburg, Virginia, to do this work with Brown and Winston and Levi Strauss. After getting here six months, um, I felt the pull of God again to surrender my life. And, um, and I started going to churches, churches in the area, but nothing fit. And, um, and my son, who was three years old at the time, kept saying to me, Mommy, come to my daycare, come to my daycare. They have a church, come to my daycare. And I thought, oh God, I go to the daycare five days a week, picking you up, seeing those people. Surely I don't want to see them on a Sunday. <laughs> Well, um, after running out of places to go and not being satisfied, because I do know, I did know God and outside of the traditional church setting, and I had a relationship with him, and I know he was very satis satisfying 
to my soul. But going to the different churches, I didn't get that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so I showed up at the daycare just to close my three-year-old mouth. But I got surprised because when I walked through the door of that daycare for a church into the sanctuary, I felt the presence of God that met me there. The presence of God like I had never experienced it before. And right away, I acknowledged within my spirit, this is home. Yeah. It's something about knowing God uh, on a level where you know when you come in contact with him, you are, you are at home. And so I started going to that church, and I would say maybe three months out of attending, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I had never known the Holy Spirit. No one had never mentioned the Holy Spirit to me, but I learned about it there in that church and got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think it was like six months after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I heard the Lord speak to me. And I know a lot of people say, God don't speak, but God does speak. I heard the Lord speak to me and he said, feed my sheep. And I didn't know what it meant. And so I would run around and ask people all the time, what does feed my sheep mean? If God tells you to feed the sheep, what exactly does he mean? Well, even my pastor did not give me a satisfactory answer as to what feed my sheep meant. And so I con would continue to hear God tell me feed my sheep. One day in reading the word of God, I discovered what feeding my sheep really meant. And I said, oh my God, God is call calling me to teach and to preach to his people. Revelation. Revelation. And so it was from there that God started to prepare me. I think six months in the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he's already called me to feed his sheep. So, of course, you know, it takes a while to really accept yes. what God is asking of you. Absolutely. And it's not always easy. And then being a female, it was, uh, there wasn't much help. And, um, and I was always taught that whatever God says, you should be able to find it in the Word. There should be some backup there. There should be something that's there to help you along the way. Well, I eagerly searched the Word for a female pastor, for, you know, female anything, because uh, what was going on in this city was male, male, male. And this was 1983. This wasn't like um, now. Now things are different. But it was during a time when females wasn't readily accepted. And so I began to do the work that he asked me to do in very small groups, like two or three. I was teaching, you know, the word as I was learning the word. And I was doing little things here and there, you know. And then what messed me up is when the little teaching I was doing began to grow. Mm -hmm. And then it grew into a lot of people. And then I didn't know what to do. I was there again, lost for what I should do. And it's amazing how you can ask people who have been in the Lord for many, many years questions about the things of God, and they have no answers for you. Very true. Yes. And so it, this is how I got started. Uh, fearfully, I went. <laughs> fearfully, I did things. Fearfully, I yielded myself to the Lord. Fearfully, I did uh, what I thought the Holy Spirit was calling me to do, and then it blossomed into this great, precious ministry that God has placed in Petersburg, Virginia. That is a whole lot. It is, and that's just a little bit. And I am glad that you mentioned a few things. Sometimes we like to feel like I don't have enough. And I literally said that a little while ago, like, I'm just, I'm not qualified for this. And we discount what God can do. Yes. And we have to stay away from that because God didn't ask us to do it in our own strength or our own might. Sometimes all you have is the one scripture, the one passage you know, but that's all they need. Yes. And when it's time for them to get number two, you'll get scripture yeah, number yeah. two and you'll have it. And so sometimes we want to outrun God and be fully ready. We like to have a degree. I want to have all the classes. But sometimes we just got to take trust. the little that we have and trust it. Trust. Walk it out. Um, you talked about not finding a place originally. Um, going to church for a lot of people 
it's hard because we just want to pick one. We want to go and that's it. But we miss the part where we go to three, four different grocery stores to get our food. Absolutely. We miss the part where we go, you'll bounce through salons because I got one that braids. Yes. I have one that does my blowouts. I got somewhere else where I get. And so we don't consider the fact that we might have to try more than once to find it. Not that God doesn't go to every church. Not that, but that may not be the place for you. You have to fit. Yeah, you, you have to fit in. So can we talk a little bit about finding a space where you fit in. How do you know when what you're connecting to is God and not good teaching? Well, I think that's the reason for the Holy Spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit is our God. He's our teacher. And I think he makes the connection for us. Uh, Oftentimes we want to be in control. Mm -hmm. And we want to do it the way that we know to do it. But it's not uh, that way in the kingdom. In the kingdom, the Holy Spirit leads God to teach us everything that we need him to do. But because we're so accustomed to doing things our way, then we run into a a spirit-led situation. We don't want to go with it Mm -hmm. uh, because we we have no no claim on it. We have nothing on it. So um, I think the key is submission. When you know that you've given your life to Christ and and well, you know within yourself that you know nothing about this new life. I knew nothing about the new life that God called me into. But I knew that he didn't call me there just to leave me, but that he gave me tools that I could work with to get to understand him and get to know his word and to walk through the life. And so I had to study. I had to show myself approved, rightly divine word. And you know, may I add, that during this period of time, I was in a church, and I knew it was where God had called me. But whenever I would present the things that God was showing me, telling me, and asking of me, I could never get any help Mm -hmm. as to the understanding of what God was really saying to me. So even though I was in a church, I still had to find my way through. I had to, um, and I I think sometimes when we go into a church, we, we look for the pastor to do all the work, Mm -hmm. to tell us everything. But God calls us individually. He calls us as an individual child. And as an individual child, we have to sort him out as we would a mom or a dad. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't want to put that work in. And as a result of it, sometimes we turn back or we give up or we say it's too hard or we, we won't go all the way. We have many excuses why we didn't do it. But If you really, truly love him and that love that he set in your heart, you want it to grow, then you pursue him. And I think that that was the one thing I did had. I had an element of pursuit. And the more I pursued God, the more he revealed himself to me. And the more he revealed himself, the more I wanted him. And I would just stay in his word, stay in prayer. My prayer life was developed, truly developed at a very young age. time of maybe three, four months. We even had prayer groups. I mean, I was really around a lot of people that was grounded and rooted, even though I was sitting in a church where I didn't get the proper guidance. Maybe I didn't get the proper guidance because the things that God was telling me didn't fit for me as a woman because I had heard several comments about, you know, God doesn't call women to preach or God didn't call women to pastor or God didn't call women, God called women to do this and do this and do this, Mm -hmm. but not the weightier things of God. But I felt the weight of what God was calling me to do. And I felt the necessity and I felt the urgency of what he was calling me to do. And then there was something in me that was running, you know, to get it done. And I was can remember being told several times, slow down, or oh, um, just take your time, Sister Elaine. Take your time. <laughs> because um, I, I, I don't know exactly what the Lord is saying to you, but so I had to really search God out for myself, find him for myself. And I think this is why I, I have been able to survive uh, these 35 years in pastoring in a, in a city where women wasn't readily accepted. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And and I got the this I guess the stick the glue from God, you know, because there were many times when I would cry out, cry out to God because there was no man that could tell me what God was really speaking to my heart. And if they knew, they just didn't share it. And so it, it, it was quite a time. But I think as a, a child of God, as mm -hmm. one who's dedicating their life to God, it is important to develop a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all got your notepads. Mine is, is right here. I'm taking my notes as well. And I want to stick on where you ended. Um, Developing a relationship with God being important because sometimes you will find yourself in these step out on the water moments. You will find yourself in these places where everybody is behind you and you know you can go, but nobody else sees how it's possible. And so instead of encouraging you, being a safety net to you as you step out there, they're like, I'm not going with you. Good luck with it. <laughs> and you you really have to have a relationship so you understand how to understand what God is telling you. Because it doesn't always come easy. God ain't never said, hey, sweetie. Not that, I don't get that. I get go. I get right. I get pray. I don't get the nice pieces. So um, being a trendsetter, like a trailblazer in this area and developing a ministry where you are following God and literally the path is being made as you're walking it. How did you know that this is the right step? Well, when God first spoke to me to feed my sheep, that didn't leave. Mm -hmm. It didn't go anywhere. It stayed with me. It stayed on me. And once I got the understanding of what it meant, um, I knew that was the ultimate goal for me. Afraid, yes very much afraid, very much um, apprehensive. But because I had a relationship with God, even before being filled with the Holy Spirit, God was very present in my life since the age of five. Mm -hmm. And because I knew that when God spoke a thing to me, that he'll seal it till the end, I hadn't... I guess develop that kind of relationship and understanding about him to know that he's that type of God, and that he just didn't speak it to let it fall. But he spoke it to me because he was going to prepare me to walk it out. How? I didn't know. But I've always been a determined person. I've never given into failure, even in the many failures that I've had in my life. I never gave in to failures, but I would take those things and use them to keep going. And so as he began to, to show me the way, even with the few people that I was teaching, because many, many people uh, come to know God, but they don't really allow the teaching of Jesus to settle in them yeah. to the point where it would lead and guide them into truth. And so... Because I had that relationship with God, I couldn't let it fall. And so day after day, many crying nights, many prayers, many um, prayers to help me to understand or help me to know or help me to know that I'm going in the right direction. Because many times I didn't know. I did know I was called to feed the sheep, but I didn't know how or what to give them. Yeah. You know, and so I had to lean and depend on God for instructions almost daily to do it. I still don't know how to fully do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to act like, you know, because we like, when we get to certain places, we feel, we, we try to act to everyone else that we know exactly what we're doing and that we are fully equipped to do what we're doing. Um, for, my, for me, it is a, it's still a daily walk. It's still daily information and instruction. And uh, because I developed back then, I still rely on it today. Each time I get up behind the pulpit, I want to know, is this what God is telling me to tell the people? Mm -hmm. I'm just not picking it because it sounds good and because I, um, I could uh, deliver it well, but simply because this is the word for the people 
in order for them to be fed? I hope I answered that question. Yes. And it gave me another question. <laughs> so um, when you talk about the failures that you've had, how do you recover from failures, especially when people are watching you? How do you recover so that you don't give up and you don't cause other people to give up? But one good thing about God is that oftentimes he will cover your failures. You really have that solid relationship with him. Everybody don't get to see everything about you because God covers you. Now, for me in the last failure, it was rather difficult, um, but I didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Many people didn't, it was, and it was um, something that many people didn't even know that I went through because when they saw me, they saw me the same. Mm -hmm. But when I would leave the pulpit and when I would go home, I would be on the floor and I'm crying out to God for healing because sometimes we, we have failures and, and we don't stop to be healed. We just keep going and keep going and keep going, bleeding all over the place because we feel like it's required of us. Yes, keep going is required, but seeking healing is even more of a requirement. And so for almost a year, it took me almost a year to overcome uh, what I had gone through. Mm -hmm. And um, and what I found that at the conclusion of that year, I was stronger than I was before I went through the failure. Mm -hmm. God so established me and so poured into me that I came up stronger than when I went down. And that's the good thing about God now. Most trials, well, let me say, God chooses what we go through. And he has a purpose why he chooses those things. Because oftentimes there's something in us He's trying to get out of us. And so those trials has a tendency to work them up and work them out. And so I, I almost, I would say I probably had to go because it made me a better person. It gave me more um, humility. It, it did a lot of things uh, in my spirit. So I would have to say that that was a chosen trial for me. Okay. I like, I like that. God chooses what we go through because he got to work some stuff out. Yeah. And sometimes we see this as a way to make us stronger. We see Because that's what they teach us, that these trials are going to make you stronger. These tests are going to grow you. But sometimes God is chopping you up because <laughs> it's a mess and he got to get some things out. And like I, I use Joseph to explain that sometimes. He had to go through all yeah. of those things because God had to get him so that he would be functional and useful in, in that. The end. In the yes. end. And he couldn't do it being the favorite son. He had to be reduced yes. in order to be rebuilt. And sometimes Absolutely. we miss that. We always want to talk about the dreamer and God talking to the prophet in them. But sometimes we have to, even with the giftings that we have, we have to be broken down so that we can be rebuilt properly. Because our parents will, they give us what they have. And sometimes yeah. it's not all the right stuff and God That's can correct. give us a difference. So you mentioned you have children. Okay. How do you balance mom and pastor? How do you balance children and time for the Lord? Like, how did you make that work? Well, my two children are 11 years apart, which was probably helpful to me. The youngest one was with, with me doing ministry, and uh, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I sometimes now see some of the mistakes I even made with that. Uh, not not having that perfect balance in place and having to be in service uh, when he was at football games and different okay. things going on, trying to be everywhere at one time. Well, it's like with all parents, you do the best you can. And it's not always the best, but you do the best you can for what you have mm -hmm. to do it with. And I still say that. Um, I don't think there's no perfect answer. I think even, even in that, the Holy Spirit leads and guides us. We have to determine what is most important. And sometimes it, it requires that we leave the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it requires that we be in the pulpit. But we do what we know that should be done at the time that it should be done. And my youngest son, who, like I said, was with me through, through my years of salvation and, and becoming a pastor and all, sometimes tell me, well, you wasn't at all of my games. Well, you didn't do this, and you did this for the church, and you did that for the church. Well, it was his years that the church began. 
So he had to sacrifice a little bit, just like I had to sacrifice. He's getting, and, and he's, he's called. So once he gets to that place in God, where he should be, he'll understand why I did what I did. He'll okay. understand it better. Okay. So we're going to like, we're going to make sure we got good balance, but good balance means listening to the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit and responding because sometimes you are mom, sometimes you are pastor, sometimes you are Absolutely. both. Absolutely. And letting the Holy Spirit guide you so that, and, and when you're not there, let the Holy Spirit go and do yeah. what, what, it, what he needs to do Absolutely. with our families. Absolutely. Um, so I want to ask this because, like I said, this, this is my pastor. So she knows me a little bit differently. Um, I came in hard-headed. I came in determined to not do what you said. But at the same time, I came in so hungry and ready to learn and listen and hear um, that even when I didn't want to see you, I wanted to hear what you had to say. (laughs) And it was a very weird space for me because I grew up in the church, but it just wasn't real for me. And when I got here, suddenly you challenged my intellect. It wasn't just, here's a Bible story, learn it. It was, yeah, but what do these words mean? Why did God say record this and put it down? Why does this story matter? And it has affected so much of what I do. I don't think I would be, I don't think I would understand that I'm even a teacher without having been taught. And so I would like for you to just give me a little bit on why it was so important that I had a concordance and I understood how to use it. But... um, (laughs) Why it's so important for us to know the word for ourselves and why it's important for us to literally be able to rightly divide. Well, first of all, I got to know that the Holy Spirit deals with us collectively, but most important, he deals with us as an individual. Um, and, and we come to him as an individual. Even though we come together as a congregation, we come collectively. Uh, you... you if you do not establish your relationship mm-hmm. with God, then you would depend on man for the rest of your life to tell you what God is saying, what God is doing, what this means, what that means. God wants us to know him for himself. He said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. So the reason why I insist that you have your concordance <laughs> in your own Bible and you do your own studying so that you can become your own child before God, so that the Holy Spirit can lead you, guide you. See, I'm really looking for each person that comes to this ministry to know God for themselves. Mm-hmm. Don't just know God through me, because I won't always be with you. Yeah. But he, lo, he said, lo, I'll be with you even until the ends of the earth. I'll be with you always. And so it's not just getting to know the pastor or having the pastor to speak a word, or having the pastor to lead you, it's you knowing God for yourself. So when the pastor says, thus, thus, and thus, you can say, amen, I agree, I follow, because I know it to be true. Okay. That right there is so important because... um, I church hunted a little bit as well. You got to try on a couple of shoes before you find oh, the right yeah. fit. And one of the things is when I would hear, take my word for it. I was like, hmm, I don't know if that's why I came here. Or if <laughs> when you hear people say things, but I can't find it and I can't make it match. And sometimes the, the goal is to build the congregation. I want my numbers to be high. So everybody's relying on the pastor because... That way, you're a captive audience. You're not going anywhere. And I absolutely needed um, to know how to do it for myself because it made it so when I moved away, I could find a place and be like, "Mm -mm, that don't feel right. Or that doesn't sound right. Or even if it didn't sound right, I could go back and find it and research it and say, oh, I didn't know that. And so it, it it, it makes it so you can stop, you know, relying on spoon feeding and you can get you a steak. (laughs) And drink your milk. Yeah. Get you a steak. Um, So I want to ask this. It's completely off topic. Um, Understanding, you talked about God calling you. You talked about 
female pastors and looking for them in the Bible. Um, that was one of my first things when I was like, God, you sure you want me to say words out loud? Um, was trying to figure out where the example was. Um, my mom, of course, has a ministry, but I've watched her not be able to grow in the way that I could see because people were like, well, who's going to go before her? Mm-hmm. Um, God sent me to the woman at the well. He said, all I want you to do is say what I told you to say. And if you just say what I told you to say, That's don't worry it. about a title, don't worry about a name, anything. That's it. Say what I told you to say. And then a little further on in the years when I started getting invited from Bible studies into pulpits, mm-hmm. he was like, Anna preached in the temple. You can preach in the temple. Anna did it. Just keep talking about Jesus and you'll be okay. <laughs> so... Where did you land that allowed you to stand on or even hold the conversation with people? Or did you have a conversation when people were like, women can't do this? What, what scripture, where did, what place did you go to that helped you know, one, that you were standing on the word and standing on what the Holy Spirit was telling you and could combat if you went back with them? Because sometimes you just ignore them people and do it anyway. <laughs> I think it's... Uh... The scripture just says, I will pour up my spirit upon all flesh. That's my mom's go to. Absolutely. And and throughout the the word of God, we don't see, God doesn't see female male. You see? Yes. He doesn't he doesn't see it like we see it. Uh, he's looking for a vessel he can use. Yes. And women in general are always willing. Mm-hmm. And more, more, more willing most of the time than most men, and and that's our nature mm-hmm. is to um, is to to be pleasing, right? And so um, I would say that my I think my confidence came in my prayer time when I would say to God, if you call me, then you open the door. Was that kind of relationship we had. So if you say I should speak, then you tell me where I should speak. If you say go, show me where I should go. And each time, he would do just that. And so I was with um, a group at a conference in Hopewell, Virginia. And, um, and the Lord said, had said to me, I'm going to call you out of this conference, I'm going to call a door to open for you. And I'm looking, and it's 15 people in the conference. See, God doesn't need a whole lot of people to do what he needs, needs done. And we always look into the numbers. You mentioned that earlier. But it's not about the numbers. It's about individuals. And he said, I'm going to cause you to preach. I'm going to give you an invitation to preach out of this conference. And it was when the conference was over that a lady came up, her husband was a pastor in Ettrick, Virginia. Mm-hmm. And she said, we would like to have you come and speak to our, speak to our church. I mean, just out of the clear of the sky. And I said, oh my God, right away I knew it was a door open by God. Mm-hmm. It couldn't have been no one else but God. And so I would say, establish your relationship with God. Let God lead. Let God speak. Let God say what needs to be said. Because if you go and do it on your own, because I see a lot of people opening doors for themselves. Mm-hmm. If you do it on your own, it, it can end up a failure. But when you know that it's God, all you got to do is be led. And then from that door that was open, I was preaching. They call me evangelist now. Okay. Okay. So I was sharing the word as an evangelist. That's a step. See, a lot of times when God calls us, we think we should go from here all the way up yep. overnight. No, it's a, process, it's a process that takes place. Mm-hmm. And so through that door, other doors open. I can remember my first message. If you do these things, you shall never fall coming out of the book of Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I will never forget that message. That was my first message. And so um, I think... Oftentimes, we just want to do things to God and not have a relationship with God. Yes. 
that relationship piece, you, you hear me keep talking about that mm -hmm. because that's so, so important. Got a lot of mimickers out there, a lot of yes. people that go, a lot of people that do it like somebody else did it, or they, they feel led to, to, to preach, so they go in and preach. But it's not effective because it, it doesn't have the, uh, out, the approval of God upon it. Okay. To draw the soul like need to be drawn. Like when you came here, you were convicted. Yes. Very convicted. Yes. And the reason why you was convicted was because I had a conviction for you. God had a conviction. And he dealt through the words that I spoke to you. They convicted your heart. You cried all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you me. thought I was the most meanest <laughs> person in the world. Absolutely. But the Holy Spirit allowed me to see who you were. Mm -hmm. See, even though you look crime baby, a little whiner, <laughs> and, and, and you even had some element of, of, of latch on. You know, uh, uh, what is what it would be called? Uh, needy. Yeah. You had all that stuff going on. But God knew who you would ultimately be. So he wouldn't let me baby that in. I mean, we could just a little bit, Lord. We could have had a little bit. <laughs> you did. You had my hug when you came in, and you had my hug when you went out. <laughs> but yeah. it helped you to understand who you were and that you're not comfortable going back to where you came out no, of. No, not at all. I cannot. So I think the difference is the call is the conviction mm -hmm. comes with it. Those that, you know, because we got a lot of preachers make you feel good, mm -hmm. but you don't have any conviction and you don't have any change. Yeah. When God is doing it, he convicts man's heart. Not condemn, but convict. Conviction leads to um, repentance. Yeah. And repentance leads to salvation. Okay. So, um, I think I am going to go ahead and wrap. Like I said, I hope you got your notes. I got a full page here. We're going to focus on our relationship. We are going to remember that God is going to cover you and you have to just trust it. And if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if you got a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit fills you and you know that you know God is going to make the path. Even if you're the person beating down the grass with your footsteps, God is going to make sure that this path is there because there's somebody, whether it's one or 1,000, that is our motto now, it, whether it's one or 1,000, God is going to make sure that the people you're supposed to affect, the people you're supposed to bring forward, the people you're just supposed to clear the path for so they can go do the work. Absolutely. Um, some of us are John the Baptist. We just going to clear the path. <laughs> uh, we're not all going to be Jesus. We're going to be right. John the Baptist sometimes. Sometimes we're just going to be Anna and announce the birth. We're right. not going to be part of the, the entire ministry of it all. We're just going to let people know that the movie about to start. And we have to be okay with that position and not desire the bigger, better things. And when God does call you to something that's great, trust it. Absolutely. Trust him. And so I'm going to finish off my notes, but I'm going to give you the opportunity to give us your final remarks. I want to see what advice you have for people behind us. I'm not going to say anything after this. I'm going to let your word be the final word. And I'm going to take all my notes. So if you see me looking down, that's what's happening. But I would like, for you to speak to women who are coming behind you, speak to ministries that are growing as a result of your walk and your, your faith walk with the Lord. Um, what advice do you have for anybody that's listening? Absolutely. Thank you. My advice would be, as I have said throughout this interview, develop your relationship with God. And don't let anything affect that. Don't let anyone take that from you because that's what's going to keep you standing in the end. Be committed to God. Be faithful to God. Mean what you say and say what you mean. In other words, follow the teachings of Christ to the utmost. Do not try to, to do shortcuts or to um, just do things to attract crowd, but be willing to allow God to use you in whatever capacity that he desires to use you in. It doesn't matter how many people are following, because Jesus himself had 12 and one was a devil. And so sometimes we look at the numbers, but it's not about the numbers. 
Sometimes God will take you into a place just for the one. Go and preach like you're preaching to a thousand. It is God that does the work anyway. It is not you. You're simply a container. You're a vessel that God wants to use and work through. Allow him to have his way with your life. Develop a prayer life. Develop a time where you study the word of God. Just don't go on what people are saying. Pull out the word of God and look in it. Read and ask for revelation. Ask God to unfold his word to you so that you can walk it out. This is not a hard thing to do. It's easy when you follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. I say unto you women who are still struggling with whether or not God has called a woman to ministry, I will truly say to you, God calls women. God calls men. God calls children. God calls girls and boys. So let's get rid of the hang up and let's just get into saying and build the kingdom of God and do it all. There will be ups and downs, but never, ever give up. Never throw in the towel and do not judge your future by one bad day because God has a, a great, great uh, ministry for you and a great time for you and he will see you through. And guess what? He'll make sure that the words that he used to speak through you will not fall to the ground. When I look at this young lady, I would have never in a million years imagined that God would use her in such a capacity. I am so proud of her. I'm so blessed by her and what God is using her to do. And so you see what a small beginning can do. Follow the Lord with your whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, there we have it. I'm not going to add nothing to that. I am so grateful that Apostle Johnson took this moment to sit and talk with us and to give us her. And again, I so appreciate you. I am so grateful. And thank you, thank you, and thank you, God, for you. All right, y'all.